Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Chris. Hopefully you know that already. Um, I asked my friend Jenny Olson to chat with me about my new album that's coming out this week and my new song uh, that came out already called Sky Spinning. And I'm really excited to talk with Jenny and um, I'll, let, I'll let them say a little bit about shoot i didn't ask you your pronouns before we started ah! um, i i go with she her tbd is my little way like to, <laughs> to be excited to be determined okay. as like my little kind of gesture towards like you know i don't know like somehow they them seems a little committal of like i don't the whole kind of narrative around that and but um, but so just to say briefly about myself, I wear a lot of different hats and my current hat, I'm actually, I'm now working for GLAAD, the LGBTQ media advocacy organization. Um, and, uh, but I'm also a queer film historian, queer film archivist, um, and then most relevantly here, um, queer film maker. And um, I, I mean, you, you know this, <laughs> for everyone else. Uh, uh, my last film in 2015, The Royal Road, um, I, I featured uh, Chris's uh, barn song as the um, closing credits, an instrumental version of it as the closing credits music for the film. And we got to go to Sundance together and yeah. Um, yeah. And like, I'm just such a huge fan such a huge fan oh, yeah. oh. um and i mean it's kind of kind of ridiculous like how much i listen to your music um and i was so excited about the new ep and about the new single and i'm excited to talk to you about the single um specifically and and but also excited to talk about the album in general um and i've listened to it a bunch and like um, just if I can just jump in and say, um, yeah. uh, I don't know. I mean, it's such an interesting thing about albums of like, you know, that it isn't just like, oh, it's just a random bunch of songs. It's like, you know, a, a feature length work or well, an EP, but yeah. um, that it all hangs together and it's beautiful the way that it hangs together and that it, um, you know, the, I love the, you know, the conceit of the, the title track and, and, and then how that frames the whole album. Yeah. And like, I found it so moving and so um, just expressive of what we've all been through in this way, you know, that it has been like the longest year. And um, I, I mean, just if I could say just about the title track, um, I, I love that it has this kind of anthemic quality to it. Like, you know, that it really expresses on such a high level, the sense, you know, yeah, of what we've all been through. And that it's, on the one hand, it's, it's sad as like all of your, all of your work is so sad. But like at the same time, like it has this like beautiful hope and optimism to it, you know, that like feels like we did it, we're doing it, <laughs> we're getting through, we're, and the, you know, the last line, like shoulder to the wind, shoulder to the- Shoulders that, to the wind, yeah. Shoulders to the wind, yeah. you know, it's like so beautiful and so, needed um i i got to do uh a, i got to do a lecture at princeton nice. um two weeks ago and i talked about um the idea that as um as readers or uh, viewers or listeners that we come to a work with needs like each person, like we have needs. I mean, whether we're like aware of them or not, <laughs> like, and and like 
or like, oh my god, here I'm gonna look. As an artist or as a as like a consumer of as a con as a as a yeah Yeah, as like a yeah as a listener yeah and like we're looking to the artist to be like like hi here I am with my needs (laughs) yeah you know and and that like. Um, you know, and like, I don't know, some things were like, oh, you know, I want to be entertained, you know, or I want to be, <laughs> I want to be sad. And like, I want you to, you to help me be sad, or, or I want you to inspire me, you know, and, and, uh, and your work, like, really does that. Like, I, or, I don't know, <laughs> you meet my needs, Chris. Yeah, I meet your needs, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, that's, yeah, that's really beautiful. And I, I, I really appreciate, I, this is kind of the first actual conversation I've even had about the album. It happened so fast that like, I haven't, it's not out yet. So people haven't really given any feedback and it, it feels like really moving to me to hear you talk about it. And uh, it's been like a real trust fall for me. This particularly, let me show everybody just so we know what we're talking about. This is the album. It's called The Longest Year. And the title track is called The Longest Year. And that was the song that we were just talking about a little bit. And um, I wrote it during the pandemic and sort of about the pandemic and um, happened really organically for me. And I was really happy with it when I finished it. And then I played it at some live stream shows and stuff. And I felt like I got a kind of like low, medium, kind of like mediocre response about it. And I kind of like, I was like, oh, like maybe this isn't a good song. And I felt like um, I kind of struggled with this song a bunch. I tried recording it a completely different way because I felt like it was like, um, like I tried to make it faster and like more like rocky and stuff. <clears throat> and it's just, the song basically had a life of its own. It had its own agenda it like wanted to be written, it like wanted to be something gentle. And like, I had to re-record the song actually, like, um, because that was what the song wanted. I don't think I've ever had a song be so like clear (laughs) about its needs actually. (laughs) And um, so it's really, it's really cool to talk about it. And I, I didn't intend to write like a sort of on theme pandemic song. Like that wasn't my goal or anything when I was writing it. And, um, I something that stands out for me is I had a friend like I was just talking to a friend like last year about and they just kind of reached out and were like oh like I've been listening to your music a lot and like I find it really like calming and really comforting and I, I hadn't really heard that like particular feedback about my songs before and I I felt like I really liked that I was like I I want that out of a song like I think like that's one of the needs that I have around especially in a time like this when there's just so much going on and we it's all really chaotic and and like confusing and hard and I think like I was like that feels like a need that a lot of people have like I I was like I'd like to lean into that more and I think I had that sentiment in mind a bit when I was working on this album and um I think the whole album kind of has that feel to it of just kind of like wanting it's got like a like a gentleness to it and um and also a hopefulness uh which I think appears in most of my body of work there's it's even like my darkest songs usually have kind of a hope nugget somewhere but I think that this one's it leans into it even more I think and I think uh I think that's sort of what the times are needing calling for so I, it's great to hear you talk about it like that and it really is um and I, that really comes through in the song and I I feel that yeah um and, yeah and this kind of sense of like I don't know yeah unity or mm. uh, mm-hmm. and um and but and also the like yeah the positiveness of it or the this kind of warmth to it um that like I mean I don't know all the language of you know musical qualities or tones or um but uh anyway that really comes across I think I mean the other thing that I particularly well just well two things in terms of the whole album you know like 
um i'm suddenly like is it going to spoil it if i say the names of the other songs no, no, no. Um, <laughs> everyone's going to listen yeah. but like the um i mean first of all like the cover of helpless of neil young's helpless um so is so such a incredible choice you know and and is also you know similar to the title track is this kind of like on the one hand it's like this kind of really sad it's like yeah we're helpless but it's like but it <laughs> but it is it has this like you know yeah like warmth to it and like and in this feeling also of like connection of people to i don't know it's like we're helpless um and and the cover itself is is really terrific like god amazing <laughs> thank you um um Thanks. and then you know and then in combination with the other cover which you know similarly has this like wistful quality but ultimately like you know yeah. like it's a wonderful world um and uh and also yeah this that kind of unity um okay while i'm like listing things about the different songs i i i i'm like what's my favorite <laughs> like actually i think my favorite is the is songbird blues wow interesting um, okay and and like listening to it um i was like this is such a good song <laughs> that, that like as a as a piece like it, it is so good in its um, classicness of like nailing this kind of genre of like a blues song that it almost sounds like a cover really? in the sense, in the sense of like, wait, isn't this like a like 50 year old blues song? Like cool. that's like such, so perfect, but like, anyway, it's yeah, so it's cool. weird. I mean, that one, like uh, I, I think I actually thought of you because I did play it. I remember I played it at that um, amazing show in Berkeley. I think you were at it. I think you came to that in the Redwoods. It's like one of my favorite shows I ever yeah. played. Yeah. It was so beautiful. But anyway, <clears throat> that one's kind of been, I've been playing it out a little bit over the last few years. And it is kind of like a little out of my wheelhouse. Like it's like a different kind of genre of song, but I, it's really simple. It's like one of the shortest songs I've ever written. And it has that kind of like classic structure and, um we recorded it more like country than I intended like but that's just kind of like things just kind of happen the way they happen and um, I'm really glad to hear you like that one thanks um yeah really love it cool. um another thing to say about the album as a whole um that I that was just noticeable to me that I'm curious to hear about is um the um sound quality of it like it has this like I don't know what the quite exact words are, but like there's like depth or like warmth to it. I don't like where, which seems like it's like something to do with the way that it's recorded in the studio or the way the production producing is done. Like, you know what I'm talking about? I, I think somewhat. I think like, um, I mean, I think I, there's a few things. I mean, so the the record was was recorded, like parts of it were recorded in the studio, and a lot of it was also recorded at home. Um, I did some of the recording myself, and um, I think like one of the things that I was leaning into a lot on this record was I was trying to make the vocal the vocals are mixed a lot louder on this record than I have done in the past, and they're 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 accented more like. Um, so I think I was trying to highlight the vocals a bit. And I think that that kind of brings you into the songs a little bit more. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I think, um, I do think we, I do think there was some analog stuff that happened in mastering that probably made it a little warmer too. And I worked, my mastering engineer, Jeff Lipton has been just like amazing to work with. And he spent a lot of time on this and um, it was difficult for him because some of the songs sound really different. They were recorded um, at different times or at different places. So making everything feel cohesive was like a, a goal and a difficult one to do. So <clears throat> anyway, thanks for that feedback though. I'm glad that you like the quality of the sound. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know. It was just like noticeable from the first 
from the beginning of it was like wow this really sounds like i don't know deep or like yeah that's um, great I mean, yeah I like that. thanks yeah um uh let's see what else well so we we were saying we were going to talk particularly about this the single sure um, and um uh i have to say i mean i it's so beautiful and i i mean i listened to it and was like oh great like here i am like crying a couple of times <laughs> and and there are times where i listen to your stuff <laughs> when i need to cry and um it's just like boom <laughs> there it is and and but like i um in some ways have been like I don't know, like recently, I'm just like, it's like too sad. And I'm like, I'm not listening to that. Like, I can't handle it. <laughs> like, it's so sad. Oh, um, <laughs> no, the new song, the single you think is the saddest song? Oh, no, it's, that's it's, funny. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not funny. I just, that's unexpected. <clears throat> um, I, but it was interesting because I had listened to the single first and I, and I particularly connected with it as, you know, as like an individual, I mean, you, you do a lot where, I mean, I think of, there's similar, I feel, always feel like a certain similarity in our work, even though I'm a filmmaker and a writer, you're a musician, but like that, like I write <clears throat> in first person mm -hmm. um, persona, you know, I mean, like, of course it's like, and I have these conversations of like, well, yeah, it's kind of me, but it's kind of not me or it's kind of a mashup of things. And, and um, you know, it's very vulnerable, very sad, a lot of melancholy. Like a little bit confessional, kind of like, like that kind of yeah. vibe, right? Like the very, like, very like open. Vulnerable. Yeah. 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 And, um, and, you know, so I feel that kind of, you know, at whatever, listening to Sky Spinning was like this kind of persona of like, lost love or lost or losing a relationship or and um and um it was just really really sad and um oh but I was gonna say but, but, then, <laughs> but then but it felt very um individual and then when I listened to it in the context of the whole album it felt like it was both individual and uh, and collective in a in a certain way do you know, do you know what I mean or yeah, I mean, if you get meta on that song, it gets pretty, it gets kind of dark too, I think. <laughs> you're like, there, yeah, you could take that even wider, I think. But I, yeah, you know, it's really interesting because I, 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 I don't like that one isn't one of the songs that I think of as a, one of my saddest songs. I um, because it feels to me like there's like these levels of acceptance and um and also just like the like self-love piece like like the choosing yourself over a relationship piece which is like the final kind of call of the song and mm -hmm. I think that's <clears throat> for me that's like that was like really freeing and like I feel like the production on the song is like intended to kind of celebrate that like the end of the song is so kind of this like conversation <clears throat> with the lap steels and the like upright bass and there's like kind of joyful melodies that happen and I think like like for me that song yeah is it's more like a liberation song and kind of like celebrating like a really healthy choice and so <clears throat> I think like it, it's always I mean I have so many songs about like having like leaving relationships and all of the like sadness that comes with that and the heartbreak and I feel like this this song doesn't really evoke the heartbreak so much um I think it kind of like explores like the complications of it but not not like it's not a wallowing song and I like I think that, that that's been a goal of mine <laughs> to create a breakup song that's you know that's more <laughs> empowering and and like not about just wallowing in the sad parts and um yeah and I I don't know I think like it's also way more like of a stream of consciousness kind of lyric writing and 
like when I wrote the song, when I started writing it, um, I started writing it many years ago and I, I had like a couple of verses and I was like, it's pretty rare that I'm like, this is, this is like, these are the verses, like, this is how it goes. Like, it was like pretty quick. I just kind of wrote the verses like pretty straight out and um, didn't really change them very much over time. But then I added, I added a verse and I added the ending and the ending didn't happen. That, that's like a way my songs go a lot where I'll like, <clears throat> I'll write the bulk of the song and then I'll be like, it's not special yet. It needs like a special thing. There needs to be like something else that happens and I won't record it until it has that like that thing. And this one, I remember when that happened with my song Landlocked, like I hadn't written the ending of the song. I had just written like the verse parts and the chorus and it didn't feel done or special. And then I like, I wrote the ending, which is like kind of, it's actually kind of a similar structure um, to Sky Spinning. And I think it had that kind of same, like that same, like, uh, like I had that same breakthrough on it where I was like, okay, it needs this ending. That's gonna like kind of shift the narrative a little bit and like, and like uh, change the mood or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm, it's helpful to hear you talk about it like that. And like, I, I can see like, okay, yeah, I, I see, you know, the, um, I don't know how to save us. I just know how to let go. I don't know how to save us. I know how to save me or, yeah, or I, I just know and, how to save me. Yeah. I just know how to save me. And like that, that is like a, a uplift or uplifting versus wallowing. Yeah. Um, but I guess, you know, but it's anyway, but it's still sad, but um, it is. <laughs> But, but it's sad yeah sad yeah. with a with a future yeah, yeah. <laughs> of of, and, of yeah. self yeah self whatever groundedness or something so that's good yeah um, yeah I mean I think like um it was I feel like for me it was like a closure piece and I think for some people it's read more as like yeah I mean there's that moment where you're like you've tried everything you know you've tried everything there is to try to like to fix a thing or and you're just like you can't there's yeah. you, you know you're you're stuck and that's it and I think there's like kind of two ways to look at that and um I don't know anyway I I I I, I for me it's more of like kind of a hopeful like moving on kind of song but I, I could see how it could be interpreted different ways and um yeah uh, no, I, I I do interpret it as a moving on, but which is both sad and yeah, yeah. to your point. Yeah. Um, good. <laughs> um, um, so wait, I'm just looking at my notes because I can we um talk for a minute again about um songbird blues in and this is like this very specific thing that. I remember having a conversation with you about this one line. Um, so there's a there's a line in Songbird Blues, the saddest notes still ring the bells. And like, which is a beautiful line, the saddest notes still ring the bells. And I, I'm curious for you to talk about what that means. And then especially in context, this is where I'm like, I'm such a hardcore fan. <laughs> like there's this line in 31 and falling uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Um, about ringing the bells and and it to me it harkens back to that and I remember asking you once about like what does that mean ringing the bells and um anyway could you talk about that and like is there a, a connection there or am I just being like geeky you know this cool. like uh yeah I I mean it actually makes me think of Andrea Gibson um I don't know if you're familiar with their work but they have this whole like kind of uh it's not a joke it's like it is kind of a joke but it's kind of real but all of their poems have the word like the word moon in their poems like it's just like a recurring theme that they like kind of got got called out about and then like they just like celebrated and I think like I mean uh we've like uh Andrea is a friend and we've had conversations about um <clears throat> about like you know how you repeat yourself or like what things like you're kind of just drawn to and what imagery you're drawn to and I have noticed that there's a few phrases or images that I come back to a lot 
and that is one of them and I I think like at first it's easy to kind of be like self-conscious or be like that's like self-referential or that's like redundant and then it's also just kind of like nice to have that thread and I think um on that tune like I think uh I just really I really love that um image um I think it's like and I really love the kind of like crossover like with imagery between like kind of maybe like traditional or like iconic like even just religious imagery and like kind of stealing it or borrowing it and and like uh like using it for for more secular like 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 love you know like how like the way that people talk about religion and the way that people talk about love um and I think like so I like the idea of like church church bells are so like they kind of evoke such a feeling and but uh for me like I don't have a lot of religious like um I think that doesn't resonate for me like I don't have a lot of history with that and um but it has that same kind of like uh like classic like kind of nostalgia feeling about it and I I still have that feeling and and so I associate it kind of with different things um I mean with Songbird Blues I think uh it's just I mean the whole song is basically like basically kind of like you know the well not the whole song but like the idea is kind of just like it's a little self-referential as a song because it's kind of like about um just expressing your sadness and like getting it out and like not and like letting that be and letting that be okay and it's it's basically like a song about writing sad songs and um and like how like you know happy songs aren't better than sad songs and and not like judging that and just like letting like just self-expression really it's just a kind of a basic kind of like um yeah a song about like you know the song where it sings its song you know and <clears throat> So it's kind of like just processing emotion through song and that, that's kind of like the the gist of it. And um and then yeah, 31 and falling, it's it's kind of a a similar a similar vibe to what I described about just the way that that makes someone feel something. Um and I just I don't know, yeah, it's just an image that I really like. And so if I've used it on other songs even, there's there's one I can think of. Um besides those two but I'm not going to tell you because <laughs> you will know <laughs> then you will know also it's actually on an unreleased song um I include there's a bell reference in the song that I wrote for my friend's wedding and that has like another kind of connotation obviously like wedding bells but it's um it's not really used in that way either so anyway thanks for asking that's a cool question yeah, just, you know, showing off my depth of <laughs> how I know every word of every song. No, this is um, cool. I never get to yeah. really talk about like lyric stuff and I enjoy it. I enjoy talking about it. So yeah, I love hearing about your your process and like that idea of I'm picturing like, you know, like you were just saying about sky spinning that like that you whatever wrote part of it and then you just like put it in a drawer or, or and then you're like wait oh this is like oh here this is the ending is that like kind of yeah like well I work on like I work on songs like for for years and if there's something that I like enough I'll just keep I'll keep working on it it'll keep going through the rotation so whenever I'm like <clears throat> whenever I'm just practicing or working on writing I'll I'll play through like five or ten of the songs that I'm just like had around in in the drawer for a while I'll be like I'll take that one out and see if there's something if there's something new for that and I think like when I started writing that song I wasn't in the I wasn't in the place yet of like the like it kind of acceptance like ready to move on place I wrote started writing it from like the perspective of still being in it and <clears throat> And so I like I like that the way that a song can evolve over time because like kind of my perspective shifts and then there's like a new opening and then there's a new like section of the song that like shows like a like the, the like further down the path. And um, so yeah, I think it's really rewarding to keep working on things for a long time. And um, I mean, the, the song Longest Year, I think is the only song that I wrote 
well, I will talk about that though. It, it's, it's not the only, it's one of two songs that I wrote during this time frame during the past couple of years, but all the other ones are songs that I at least like started or mostly wrote, you know, in the last like long time. And one thing I will mention, which is kind of interesting, I think is um, several of these songs have the same kind of blues guitar picking pattern. And it's not a way that I normally, it's not my normal like go-to style that I play on the guitar. Um, and this is from like probably seven or eight years ago um, when I was kicking around a lot with Nicole Reynolds, who's another songwriter whose music I just love. And we, um, we were kind of just trading tunes and talking about guitar and Nicole is a lot of like more complicated and more blue style like finger picking and I was like how do you play that and so Nicole is kind of teaching me her style and um several of the songs on this album are written from that experience I started trying to play some of like her her style and it still doesn't sound like how she would play it it's like my still take on that kind of um, pattern but I, I I think it's interesting and um it's not a thing that I've it's not a pattern that I've used to like really on other songs before it kind of came out of that that experience um I I that's nice to hear yeah. the, again like the depth it's so great to get to you know hear you talk more deeply I always like you know obviously when you do your shows and you do your little 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 shtick little yeah, little, little intros tell, tell us a little bit about each thing and like I love that and but it's nice to get a little deeper um I would love to um hear you talk about and now I'm gonna like not remember the actual title of the other song the air I airplane wanna, man the, yeah airplane yeah man. Like, yeah that's the other song that I wrote during during the pandemic and um yeah I'd love to talk about it um do you want me to just kind of intro it a little? Yeah. So um, uh, someone reached out uh, via email last, like last spring um, and asked if I was available to write a song, like a commission song um, for her father who had passed away. And um, he was also a fan of my music. And so it felt like, kind of extra special to be able to um to be able to be involved in that and they wanted a song that they could play at the memorial and um you know I said I wasn't sure like I'd be happy to try because I don't like to you know I, I don't want to like provide or like you know come back with a thing that I'm not that I can't stand behind so I was like I'll, I'll try and you know if something if it works out then you know I'm happy to do this thing and um, so they sent me some of his writings, uh, some of his like some letters and different things that he had written. Um, his name was uh, Phil Dorothy, and um, I got to know him a little bit through that. And I had met him, I had met him at shows a couple of times as well, so I kind of remembered him a little. And I talked to his family members a bunch about him and his life, and. And I started, I took a bunch of notes and I worked on this song and um, I ended up with something that I liked, uh, I liked it quite a bit. And I, um, so I recorded for them in the spring. And when I was making this album, I wasn't sure whether or not I would include it on an album. And, you know, I, I got my permission and stuff and um, it felt like it actually really fit um, for a bunch of reasons, honestly, but uh, I think like just kind of honoring people that have passed in the last few years. And I think a lot of people have um, experienced that. And um, it's also like, a, I like that it takes the focus away, like from my own experience. I think like, it's really easy for me to kind of just get in that groove of just writing about my own perspective. And I um, I really appreciate opportunities to kind of like get outside that box. And it was really cool to kind of, you know, try to have a different perspective and tell a different story and like honor a different person. And um, <clears throat> uh, it's also like, you know, it's really, it, it's actually the one on the album that sometimes will make me tear up a little. Cause I feel like, um, 
I really wish he could have heard it, you know, that kind of thing. Like, I think he would, he would have really liked it. And uh, just like having that song for him and, uh, and just like, um, one of the things that one of his family members told me uh, on the phone was that he had this kind of like obsession with being famous, like he wanted to be famous or something. And um, I mean, he was, he was really well loved and well accomplished, but I would not like famous in the way that he wanted. And so that's kind of like the chorus of the song a little is alluding to like, you know, um, to that. And, but I feel like it's, I feel like it's really sweet because it kind of like allows him to like live on and kind of have this like other like fame through the song. And, um, and that, that feels really special and like sweet to me to be able to like, uh, like allow that. So. Yeah. Um, that's beautiful. Uh, I think, um, you know, it has a quality, uh, uh, I guess I think of it in a, like in the kind of folk genre, like it feels, I don't know, has these qualities of like a folk, whatever that particular thing. And it made me think actually of, um, I mean, it's diff very different, but certain something that it shares with porch song. Huh, interesting. Um, you know, in that like, it's like about someone else and like, it has this. Oh, do you mean porch songs or swan song? Sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, okay, definitely. Wait, yeah, no, like, I definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely see a lot of overlap with Swan Song in that one for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's like celebrating someone's life, and um, yeah, I, I kind of, I mean, I didn't necessarily, I didn't go into it like with that goal or anything, but I think, I, I mean, I, I don't want to write a sad song about someone who, you know, it's, just, I, I feel like there's a quality that I want to like that I hope that can encompass in a song that is for someone in a memorial kind of way like that like um and so they both kind of have that quality I think and um uh yeah and it is like fo like folkier it's a little like it's it definitely has that folk folk vibe and it's a little more story telly yeah. it's like got like more it's more kind of de details of of, of of like a life kind of thing, which which is similar to Swan Song, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, which kind of makes me think, I got, we should probably maybe head towards wrapping up, but it makes me think of, um, I don't know, this whole topic of like sad versus whatever. And like, I guess like there's a way that it's that, it's that your work is so poignant, which is a combination of sadness and hope and like you know which is life yeah. <laughs> and um <clears throat> on a good day <laughs> life on a good day <laughs> yeah but you know I mean and, and I don't know I guess just to go back to the thing about like people's needs you know that like we need to be uh, you know reminded just to stay connected emotionally and I think that is just one of the things that you do so well and that this that this album does so well and um you know that we really do need that is you know acknowledging the poignancy of what we've been through what we're still going through um you know but the like we can do it we're whatever the you know resilience, the hope, the, um, and the, the, what we need to continue to, to get through it and stay connected and stay in our best selves. And, um, you know, and uh, it's just a really powerful thing. I, and I'm personally really grateful. Thanks so much. <laughs> you. Yeah. It's um <clears throat> thank you so much. I, I think it's it's so sweet to hear all of that. And I haven't uh as you know, you know, I haven't gotten a lot of feedback about the record yet. So it feels really vulnerable still and I really appreciate like positive remarks in that regard. And it feels like also your feedback feels like kind of um kind of like how I intended the record and that that feels extra good. Um I, it feels like it it's landing in the right place. So love that. Thank you. Yeah. 
I'm so excited for it to get out in the world and to get <laughs> have you start getting you know more response and like um, thank you yeah yeah thanks um, for yeah thank you so much for doing this it's so fun to talk to you and um it's yeah it's been too long anyway so this was awesome and everyone also check out the royal road it's such a beautiful and important film and i think about it all the time i was just traveling in california and it was like popping up in my brain a lot so um thank you yeah thank you um Hello. yeah so a new album comes out friday december 3rd and i'm going to be touring in the northeast a lot i have uh portland and seattle shows and then i'm in the northeast for a couple weeks um, and I will have one uh, live stream show as well for people that don't live in any of those places. So I really hope that y'all can tune in to a show. And um, thanks so and, much for yeah. And do we all go to like chrisparika.com <laughs> or <laughs> you buy the yeah, album? Just the regular, yeah, the regular your website. Spotify playlist. I have the Spotify, I have um, uh, the website, all my merch is up. I have new merch like things, uh, which is really fun. And uh, I'm doing CDs and vinyl pre-orders and um, it's all up on the website and everything will be out on all the streaming services on Friday and the single is out now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Chris.